Hello, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you what spatial and temporal summation are in under 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So over the past couple of videos, we've been talking a lot about how neurotransmitters are released. And in summary, what we see is that a neuron is stimulated, which will then cause action potentials to propagate down the axon, which will therefore cause the release of neurotransmitters into the environment. Now, over the past couple of videos, we have only been considering a two-neuron system, a presynaptic uh, neuron that is releasing the neurotransmitters and a postsynaptic neuron that is responding to those neurotransmitters. However, in real life, this is not the case. In real life, what we see is that a neuron will actually be partnered with many different neurons, and each of these neurons is going to be releasing different signals. So some neurons may be releasing stimulatory signals, while others may be releasing inhibitory signals. And the neuron is going to be constantly receiving different signals from different neurons. So how is the cell going to deal with all of these signals? Well, one way that the cell will deal with all of these signals is going to be through temporal summation, which is what we're going to talk about next, and spatial summation, which is what we're going to talk about towards the end of the video. So let's take a look at what temporal summation is. So in order to understand what temporal summation is, I have a hypothetical experiment. And in this experiment, we have a dendrite, which is shown here. So the dendrite is basically an extension from the cell body of the neuron. And what the dendrite does is it receives information from other neurons. So it receives neurotransmitters from other neurons. Now in this experiment, we have an electrode, which I show here. And this electrode is implanted in the dendrite. And what this electrode is going to do is it's going to be passing depolarizing stimuli into the dendrite. And what we're going to be doing in this experiment is we're going to be measuring the voltage changes that occur from these stimuli. The voltage changes are going to be measured through the use of a voltage sensor and the results are going to be displayed on this monitor. Now this red dashed line on the monitor is the threshold potential or the potential at which the cell will fire an action potential. So when the cell is at rest, at time zero of the experiment, we see that the cell is at the resting potential. And the resting potential is negative 70 millivolts for this particular neuron. And the resting potential is shown here by the green line. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start the experiment. And in order to start this experiment, all we're going to do is send in one single depolarizing stimulus into the dendrite. So this is the single stimulus, and we're now going to send it in. And when we send in this stimulus, what we see on the monitor is something like this. So from this single depolarizing stimulus in the dendrite, we see that when the stimulus is sent in, the cell membrane potential will depolarize up to a certain level, and then it will repolarize back down to the resting potential. Now what if we were to send in multiple signals? In this case, let's send in two signals sequentially. So here we have the two signals, and what we're going to do is we're going to send them in now. So we're going to send in signal number one, then signal number two. And what we would see on the monitor is something like this. So what we see here is that when we send in signal number one, the cell depolarizes up to a certain point and then repolarizes back down. But however, before it can repolarize all the way back down to the resting potential, we send in the second stimulus, which is around here. And when the second stimulus is sent in, the cell depolarizes even further up, and then it comes back down. So what we see with each sequential stimulus is a sequential buildup in the synaptic potential. So now let's do this again, but with three different stimuli. So here we have the three different stimuli, and now we're going to send them in. So one, two, three. And what we would see on the monitor is this. So what we see here is a very similar result to what we saw with the two stimuli. So what you see here is that with the first stimulus, the cell depolarizes, it repolarizes down to a certain level, and before it comes back to the resting potential, we send in another stimulus, which causes it to depolarize, and then a third one. And what we see here is a sequential buildup of the postsynaptic potentials. So this is temporal summation. Temporal summation is when you stimulate the same dendrite multiple times 
with a very high frequency, causing it to sequentially build up in synaptic strength. So in experiment number two, we're going to look at what spatial summation is. So this is a very similar setup to what we had for the temporal summation experiment. However, in this case, we're looking at three different dendrites. So this is dendrite 1, dendrite 2, and dendrite 3. And each of these dendrites are connected to a different electrode. So we see electrode 1, electrode 2, electrode 3. And this vertical line symbolizes the cell body of the neuron. And implanted in this, into the cell body of this neuron is a voltage sensor which is connected to a monitor once again. So in order to start this experiment, what we're going to do is look at the resting potential again. So at time zero, the cell is at rest at around negative 70 millivolts. So for trial one of this experiment, what we're going to do is we're only going to send in one stimulus at one dendrite. So here is our stimulus on the one dendrite. And when we send this stimulus in, what we would see on the voltage sensor is this. So when we send in that stimulus, we see that the cell depolarizes up to a certain level, and then it repolarizes back down to the resting potential. Now in trial two of this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to send in two signals at two dendrites simultaneously. So here we have signal one and signal two, and we're going to send in these two signals at two dendrites simultaneously. So one, two. And what we would see on the monitor is something like this. So what we see in this case on the monitor is that the cell depolarizes once again, but it depolarizes to a much higher level than it did in the trial one of the experiment. And then it comes back down to the resting potential. So what about if we stimulate all three simultaneously? Well, let's see what happens. So if we were to stimulate all three simultaneously, what we would see is something like this. So what we see is that the cell depolarizes to an even further level and then comes back down to the resting potential. So this aspect is called spatial summation. So spatial summation is basically when you stimulate multiple dendrites simultaneously and all of these signals will have an additive effect. So therefore, it causes an increase in the signal strength. So, when, so spatial summation is when you have multiple dendrites stim, stimulated simultaneously, causing an increase in the signal strength. Now, if you were to look at a neuron, what you would see is that we actually have a problem. So it, let's take a look at what would happen to a neuron if we were to stimulate a particular dendrite. So if we were to look at this segment of the dendrite, what we would see after we stimulate it at the dendrite is something like this. So at, when we stimulate the dendrite, what we see is that the cell will depolarize up to a certain level, and then it would repolarize back down. However, in order to initiate an action potential, the synaptic potential has to travel all the way from the dendrite to the axon hillock here in order to initiate the action potential. So what would this synaptic potential look like as we travel down the length of the neuron? So let's look at location number two. So location number two is further down the dendrite than location number one. And what we would see with the synaptic potential is something like this. So what we see is that as we increase the distance away from the stimulus origin, we see that the stimulus intensity decreases. So in other words, the signal is attenuating. And by the time we get to the axon hillock, what we would see is something like this, where the stimulus is far below the threshold and not enough to elicit an action potential. So the main problem associated with synaptic transmission is signal attenuation, or in other words, the weakening of a signal as it travels down the neuron. So the neuron has an incredibly difficult task to deal with, and this task is to keep the signal strong enough over a long distance in order to initiate an action potential. So how is the cell going to keep this original stimulus strong enough in order to elicit an, an action potential all the way over here? So if you were to look at a postsynaptic neuron, what you would see is that you would have a particular ligand-gated ion channel. And this ion channel that we're looking at is the nicotinic receptor.
So what happens is, is that the nicotinic receptor will bind to acetylcholine. So acetylcholine will bind to the receptor, which will open it, and it will cause an inward current. This current would depolarize the cell. Now, if this current were left on its own, it would rapidly degrade, as we saw with that previous experiment. However, what some cells have in the dendrite is a active mechanism by which they can enhance the strength of the signal. And this active mechanism can use voltage-gated ion channels, and one example of which is the voltage-gated calcium channel. So what happens is, is that this depolarization that was caused by the opening of the nicotinic receptor will open voltage-gated calcium channels, which will allow calcium to flow in, and the calcium and the depolarization caused by the nicotinic receptor will have an additive effect, which will increase the strength of the stimulus, allowing it to travel further distances, therefore allowing an action potential to possibly be elicited. So in summary, what we see here is that neurons receive many signals from many neurons. And when these neurons receive these signals, they can process them in two different ways. One is through uh, temporal summation, and this is basically when you stimulate the same dendrite multiple times at a high frequency, and this causes the synaptic potentials to increase in strength with each stimulus. And the second way is spatial summation, and this is basically when you stimulate multiple dendrites at the same time, causing an increase in the signal strength. And lastly, we saw that synaptic potentials degrade over distance, therefore some cells have active mechanisms to help them propagate the signal over a longer distance. So I hope this video helped you understand what spatial and temporal summation are, and I hope to see you in the next one.